Hi, I'm Alice Ayers, President and CEO of the Association for Healthcare Philanthropy, and I am delighted to be joined today by Lloyd Dean, Chief Executive Officer of Common Spirit Health. Lloyd leads Common Spirit Health's clinical and hospital operations, financial, strategy, and human resources for over 150,000 employees across 140 hospitals and over 1,500 care sites. Lloyd, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. I'm so appreciative. Well, I just want you to know I'm excited not only to be with you, but this is a important conversation and appreciate the opportunity to engage. Thank you. I, you know, I think we're all in denial over the fact that you are retiring. Um, it's hard to imagine healthcare without Lloyd Dean in it in six months. So. Can you take us back and tell us a little bit about why you chose to enter the healthcare space? Yes, and uh, thank you for the question because it's something that um, I actually, at this stage of my life, periodically reflect on myself because I think, you know, our pathways to our professional uh, endeavors and, 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 and journey are often driven by what we experience in life. And uh, just really quickly, I come from a, a family of nine kids, uh, which was a you know a large family. And my parents moved up from the from the south to to Michigan because uh, my dad could get a job there, and African Americans had more opportunities there. But the community I grew up in was made up of African Americans who migrated from the south, and we were kind of out in this little rural uh, area. And we really had no public entities. We didn't have any medical structures or infrastructure in our uh, community. And I always tell the story that the first time that I ever saw a physician or a nurse was for a football physical in school. So I saw a lot of suffering in my community because people were really uh, experiencing obesity, there were nutrition issues, uh, there were lack of access issues. So that's that stuck with me. And I watched my mother. I just watched that burden that was on her uh, to provide all of our health care. And that really started this passion and this desire to do something with my life to make sure that my brothers and sisters had better opportunities than I did. That's, I think for so many people, such an, a powerful motivator. Um, but to have gone from that experience to leading a healthcare system of 140 hospitals and over 1500 care sites is quite a journey and an incredible story. I bet you've seen a lot change in the healthcare world in those years. What do you think has changed for the better? Technology. I'm just amazed about capabilities that we have. And, you know, and I think about something as simple as a watch that, you know, one can wear now and you can get all of these readings about a status. I think that access has changed historically. You know, my mother... There was no such thing as outpatient care. Uh, when my brothers and sisters were, were born, it was all at a, at a hospital. And there was no distributive access points within communities. So that's been a major change. And I think also the emphasis on prevention as opposed to just treatment. Um, as I was growing up, medicine was really defined by if you got sick, or if you had a problem, you would go see a doctor or go uh, to, the, to, the, to the hospital. There just wasn't a lot of education. There wasn't a lot of focus on what can we do and what is your responsibility for your own health to prevent getting sick. And the other thing that I've seen that has changed is as a profession and as a calling, younger people have really latched on to this idea of helping others. And within our healthcare sector, we allow them the opportunity 
to carry out that desire and that dream. And the last thing that I would say is that philanthropy uh, in its role in our world and in our country to help address uh, many of the social determinants of health, to not only help individuals, but to help communities. You know, I get emotional about the fact that uh, people see needs in a community and see unequal situation or unequal access, and they give of their heart and they give of their resources, and that that has to be nurtured. And I think that philanthropy is not just an art, it's a science. And to do it right and to be successful and to get people to believe and understand an opportunity and the impact that they can have and to be comfortable that their dollars and their resources will be used to, to change things in, a, again, a demonstrable and a sustainable way is can only be done by people who have answered a calling and recognize how important the work that they do truly is. You have just made um, a membership of about 7,500 fundraisers feel like a million dollars. So thank you for, for those um, really genuinely kind things that you've just said about this, this group. They are, um, they are their own set of heroes, and they have, especially in this last couple of years, had to completely think about the world differently as they've gone about their jobs in the way that we all have. Um, and so to be recognized for doing that kind of great work by someone like you uh, will make them, I think, feel very proud of the work that they do. So thank you. I mean, it's almost like missionary work. I mean, I just, uh, you know, I think about some of the some of the gifts that we've received and whether they're giving a dollar or whether they're giving a million dollars, there is a connection, a similarity and a uniqueness to that. And it takes transparency. It takes a, a, a genuineness. Uh, and an ability to to touch people in a way that I think is one of God's gifts uh, to human beings. And so I'm just in awe of people who have dedicated their lives uh, to helping others. One of the more recent things that Common Spirit Health has been focused on um, is your recent, relatively recent partnership with Morehouse School of Medicine. Um, and knowing all of the research out there on clinical outcomes for especially people of color when they are treated by clinicians of color, this is something that should be a game changer when it comes to um, improving health equity and reducing some of those inequities. Tell me how it came about and tell me what your goals are for it. Let me just first say how excited I am for us at Common Spirit to be in partnership with one of this nation's most historical black colleges. And one of the challenges that we face in many of our communities is a reticent on people in communities to access the health and health system uh, because they didn't see clinicians or physicians that looked like them. And there have been many, many studies that show, as you said, that when members of our communities can see people that look like them, that they feel comfortable, understand them, understand their life experiences, that they are then more apt to engage and to access the system. So this opportunity to partner with Morehouse, to train, to develop, and to place physicians of color has been, I think, one of the most exciting and important partnerships that we have done and will do. And we have 
partnerships with Creighton. We have partnerships with the Baylor School of Medicine. So all of those are the goal is to help advance and train the graduates of these institutions and for them to have a willingness to stay and to practice in communities with the most need. So look out 10 years, maybe even 20 years, and paint the picture of what you hope healthcare, and I'm going to I'm going to use some of the language that you've used and even say, you know, beyond the acute care setting, beyond even sort of the sickness side of things, but perhaps the wellness side as well. What will healthcare look like or maybe better, what should healthcare look like by 20 years from now? When I think about where we are today and I think about, you know, where I hope that we will be stepping our way uh, to this ultimate dream where there is a realization and an understanding that I'm ultimately only as healthy as you are and that I should be caring for your health and your well-being as much as I care for mine. We are a nation where everyone, everyone will be able to access care equally fairly and justly, regardless of gender, regardless of race, that we will realize and we will invest in an infrastructure that supports that healthier communities and health status and access to those services are good for society and that it's a right that we would all have access as human beings for the time we are blessed to be on this earth. I like that vision a whole lot. And I think there is a lot to it that philanthropy can help with. So I am excited to see philanthropy make a difference as we make that vision happen. I'm so grateful on behalf of all of our members. I'm so grateful to you for spending this time with us because um, what you have said is inspirational. It is um, incredibly um, understanding of the work that we do, um, and it gives us all even more of a reason to continue to do more in order to connect communities with healthcare in a new and different way. So thank you for doing this with us. Well, I just want to uh, say to know that you and the association and its membership is out there every day looking at how we can take these precious resources that we have and get the greatest, if you will, return on that via helping others and helping communities gives me a great deal of comfort. And to all of your membership, may God bless you You are truly doing God's work and uh, carry on, carry on. Thank you. Thank you very much. 